So before I tell you guys about Big Sur and the features it has, I wanna show you guys one of the major features that Apple did not talk about in the conference. So let's start off with the best feature that they finally added back, the boot up. My goodness, they finally brought it back. I missed this boot up chime for so many years because it sounds much more improved than the previous generations, but by far out of all the features that are in Big Sur, this is the best feature that they could have added. So this is macOS Big Sur, macOS 11, get to that in a second. And I've gotta say, looking at images of Big Sur online on what it actually looks like, good choice, Apple. This is definitely a historic point for macOS, and I would even say Apple in general, because Big Sur is not only a visual improvement, but there's definitely a lot of improvements that have happened on in the back end of things. So you can also tell this is a major change because since 2001, when macOS 10 first came out, it's always been macOS 10 dot something. And the latest one we had was 10.15, which was Catalina. But now moving forward, it looks like Apple has finally transitioned over to macOS 11, which is now Big Sur. So it's honestly a really exciting time to be an Apple fan, but I would even say just to be inside like the technology space in general, because I do feel like a lot of change is going to be coming soon because I mean, not saying Apple is the forefront of everything, but it seems that whenever Apple decides to do a major change, everyone else seems to follow in suit. So it's going to be an exciting upcoming years. But with all that being said, I want to get into some of the major features that are inside Big Sur. Trust me, there's a lot. And what I mean a lot, there is a lot. If you don't see your device on this list, unfortunately, you will not be able to update to Big Sur. So if you are from 2012 or earlier, you will not be able to get Big Sur. So you have to give Apple more money if you want to get this honestly amazing operating system. So first I wanna talk about the appearance and the experience. And it is vastly improved. I mean, vastly improved to previous iterations of macOS. macOS has never looked better. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the top bar is gone because you can actually hide the top bar now, which is nice. So you can have a full desktop screen with nothing in your way. If you wanna to get to something, you just hover over it. It'll come down, it'll come up. That's one of the small features that I like so far. The menu bars and floating dock have been given a redesign to give it a more modern look with the icons matching iOS and iPadOS 14 but with more depth and shadowing. So I'm gonna start off with the top bar, and as you can see, the control center has landed on macOS, which is pretty much just control center from iPadOS and iOS, and all the icons at the top have also been changed. The Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, the sound, they all have interfaces similar to the mobile experience, which makes macOS feel more modern. So for those of you who don't have a touch bar, one thing I want you guys to notice is that you now have the option to give a better range of control with not only the sound, but the display as well. And I will get into this later in the video, but I have a feeling a touchscreen Mac is coming soon, but I'll justify that later in the video. You'll be able to drill down by clicking on the arrow to get more options. Everything just feels more fluid in general. And hear me out. Mac OS from a design standpoint never felt like it could have touch. Everything was very flat, condensed, and felt like you need a mouse and keyboard. With Big Sur and this design, these toggles, everything is just more spaced out. They have the toggle designs where it has a little circle where you can drag it across, where it genuinely feels like I should be able to just click it and drag it. And even moving on to the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, the AirDrop, Do Not Disturb, they all have these icons that make it look like I can just click on it and boom. It's like, I don't know why I said boom, but it just feels like I should be able to interact with these icons now. It feels more inviting. So the notification center also got, what the heck? That was not supposed to happen. <laughs> so the notification center also got an overhaul. So you just swipe three fingers over to the left and you'll see the notification center. And to be honest, if you just swipe down on your iPad or iPhone, you'll get the same experience. But everything is being carried over from iOS and iPad OS with the widgets. So you'll be able to add it your widgets super easily. The top menu bar is also translucent, which gives macOS a softer feel in an accent design instead of having just one color blanket the entire system. 
They also added new sounds, which sound amazing. It sounds so much better to the ears. I didn't notice how harsh the older sounds were until I started using Big Sur and I went back to my previous 2012 MacBook Pro, but I'll have you guys take a listen to all the new sounds that are in Big Sur versus the old MacBooks. So there is one sound that they did not change, even though they did bring back the chime. Um, it is the charging sound. So the charging sound is the same, which kind of sucks, but you know, hopefully they change it in the future. If you're watching this Apple, please change the charge sound. It sounds like I'm charging my iPhone, but this is a MacBook, please. So the more you explore Big Sur, the more aesthetically pleasing you'll find the OS to be. So hopefully in the fall, you guys will be able to experience how amazing Big Sur is. So now let's open Safari. And this is one with a major change. So the start page has been redesigned and now lists the summary of your private reports for the last 30 days, similar to Brave, but much more in depth. You can also customize the background to give your Safari a more unique look. So back to privacy report, and this is something that's important to those who care about security and privacy. What this is, is Apple is basically identifying and preventing trackers across the internet from uniquely identifying you. So they have this for each website and all you have to do is click on the shield, click on the eye, and you get access to more information. So Apple is boasting more performance compared to Chrome and Firefox up to three hours extra. And I think that's probably just because Safari is probably a little bit more lightweight than those two other browsers. So there are also new fave icon and tabs and hovering over them gives you a nice preview. Nice addition. So with this new design, when you have many tabs open, you won't have to scroll through. All you have to do is click on your favorite icon. And honestly, this was what was the most frustrating thing for me when I was using Safari was I'm a person who has a lot of tabs open and it got to a point where I just had to like scroll through all my tabs in Safari and they completely gutted that system and now it's just all those fave icons. But using Big Sur with a lot of tabs, it's a lot more enjoyable and even hovering over the icon things has really made things a lot easier to use in Safari. So Safari can now translate languages on the fly. So Apple showed us translating a Spanish website into English and after using Big Sur for a couple of days, I found you can do it in the inverse on your own. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up a random Google Doc and you'll notice that the translation symbol is available at the top. And so some of the language that I translated it to was Spanish, Chinese, German, and they all worked really well. But like I said before, this is a beta, so not everything is going to be fully fleshed out yet. So some of the language that I had in there was Arabic, I had Italian, but neither of those languages was showing up to be able to be auto-translated. So maybe as time goes on, as this new macOS 11 Big Sur gets evolved down the line, that more languages will be supported. So that's something that's pretty cool to keep in mind. So moving on to messages. Ooh, you hear that sound? The new addition specific to Big Sur is the ability to have message effects. You can easily search for memes now. Emojis can be added, so make sure you hit that like button. See what I did there? The inline messages, the group additions, the pin conversations, all those major features that were shown in iOS 14 for messages is also here on Big Sur, but I wanna make a separate video on that specifically for iOS 14. So subscribe if you wanna see that later on in the week. So next up is battery, and this might be a surprise to you guys, but this is an improvement that is similar to what we saw on iOS 12. So we can now see the maximum capacity without going to the system report. We also have new options such as optimize battery charging, optimize video streaming while on battery, manage battery longevity. You can also see the health for the past 24 hours and 10 days. So good things are coming from the battery department and the only thing I'm waiting on right now is just that million mile battery by Tesla. That's all I'm waiting for, please. So moving on to Maps, Maps has been redesigned as well and I'm gonna be honest, I use Google Maps for everything. Whenever Apple Maps tries to open it up, I just swipe it down 
or I close it and open it up in Google Maps. But maps, you can now find guides. Keep in mind, at this time, it's only available in New York, London, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. But like I said, this is a beta. Hopefully, when this rolls out in the fall, there will be more locations for you guys to look up for your guides. So for example, if I were to type in San Francisco, I will have more access to their guides. They also have the cycling integrated on the maps. So if you lived in San Francisco and you wanted to bike to the Apple headquarters, it'll tell you what your route is, what lane you'll be in, and if it'll be flat. And you can also avoid hills, stairs, and other features. The coolest feature I've been messing around with is the look around, similar to when you drop a person on Google Maps, but this one feels much more fluid. So some of the other features I wanna highlight real quick are, you know, AirPods are gonna be switching automatically depending on the device that you're using, such as the MacBook. You're gonna be having better Siri, so she knows a lot more, faster updates, and just a lot more. You guys have no idea how much Big Sur contains on not only the front side of things, but also the back end side of things because a lot of apps were now natively built using Catalyst, but that's a topic for a whole different story. But if you guys want me to dive into what Big Sur is all about even deeper, please let me know down in the comments below. I'm gonna warn you guys that that video might be, you know, 30 to 45 minutes, but if you want me to make a video that's more easily digestible for you guys to understand and give you guys, then I'll be more than happy to do that. Just let me know down in the comments below. So I know you guys might be wondering what my thoughts are on Apple Silicon, and that's basically just Apple making their own chips instead of relying on Intel to power their MacBooks. And I just don't have the full thoughts on it yet. I have some ideas on some theories I might have, and I know it's a really hot topic right now, but I just need a few more days to think about some things rationally because this WWDC 2020 is for sure a historic point for Apple because, and I don't think Tim Cook would have mentioned major historic points for Apple, which was the PowerPC, Mac OS X, and then moving on to Intel, and now they're moving away from Intel, which shows that this is another major change for Apple. But for me personally, I also think that not only is this a major change for Apple, this might be a major change for the computer industry as well, because Microsoft has also been making their own ARM chips about a year ago, and you know, it's just going to be a very interesting couple of years. And I know you guys might also be wondering, you know, the people who just bought a MacBook with Intel processors, is it gonna be bad? No, I think you're gonna be good for maybe five to 10 years. But that's a completely separate video that I wanna make in the future when I have my thoughts fully developed. But if you guys wanna see more software content that Apple has announced at WWDC, please subscribe so you can see that because I do have iPadOS 14, iOS 14, watchOS 7, and I'm trying to get tvOS 14, but it's not letting me, so we're still trying to work that out. But like the video if you liked it, leave a comment if you wanna talk down below, and as always guys, much love. If you're wondering what to listen to on the go, check out Audible. Audible is a free app that offers thousands of titles, and each month you get a free audiobook to choose from. Audible also has podcasts, guided wellness programs, comedy, and original content. If you don't know what to listen to, check out my Amazon store and look at my Audible library in the description. I've been an Audible subscriber since 2017, and I find myself listening to books a great way to educate myself, whether it's in the shower, cooking, exercising, driving to work, or just chilling in my bed. Sign up today using my link and get a free month and book.